This is Manor Lords. Uh, it just released today as of this recording, which is, what, the 26th of April, 2024? I don't know why that information is useful to you. The game is already out. Uh, it's out in early access, and so you're going to see some placeholder stuff and stuff that doesn't quite work yet in the game. But so far, I'm having a great time with it. I've started one game, proceeded a little bit of the way into the very early, you know, tech tree, the very early everything. I've made some mistakes, uh, and so I'm going to try to start over with a brand new game and see if I can do a little bit of a better job this time around. Hey there, Malator. Thanks for joining me in the chat. So the first thing we're going to do is choose who we are and what our, how our little tiny nation represents itself. Uh, so I think I definitely want to be this man. Um, and let's see, what kind, what kind of what kind of sigil would this man have? I mean, his head does look like a beehive, so th that seems pretty legit. He also looks like a giant walking bell, though, and and I feel like the bell, the bell might be more his thing. Uh, so let's, let's make it a nice, nice golden bell. Uh, yeah, make it a nice golden bell, and then. For the background, we could go. We could go black with a golden bell. Uh, maybe so. So, uh, Sunny Games came in and said, "Asks what, asks what my family's going to do to celebrate my uh, birthday weekend." So, as a dad, uh, my main job is actually to celebrate my children. And so, this weekend is still mostly about my daughter's uh, play. Uh, so, she's doing the big end of the year play for her senior year, and she has this really great standout role. It's Cinderella, and she's playing Charlotte, the mean stepsister. And uh, they actually took Stepsister's Lament, which is this, uh, you know, it, it's normally just this cute little catty song that the stepsisters sing off to one side at some point in the middle of the play. Uh, they turned it into a showstopper, and my daughter just completely annihilates the audience, and it's great. So she's off doing that right now. I've already watched it twice. Uh, so uh, I'm at home doing my own thing while most of us are actually out there focused on supporting her. But, uh, yeah, we're really, really proud of her. She's doing a great job, and she's going to college uh, at the end of the year, which is going to be crazy. Uh, so, oh, by the way, <laughs> I just realized I didn't notice this. Um, Ranathcore pointed out the automatic name generator over here. Uh, this was not my decision. Um, I, I, I assume this is pronounced Kuntz. Um, but that is just one of the random names that can appear. If you keep re-clicking the, the, the portrait... Ditz is another one. Uh, it'll just keep going through these names until until it comes up again. I guess it's just a normal medieval name. Uh, Erhart, Thomas, Peter, Thomas, Veit, Peter, Fritz, Herman, Ott. And then there's that one. Um, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, let's let's go with this. Uh, so I'm not going to change any of the settings right here just because I don't even really know what I think of most of them. And so, you know, might as well just go with whatever they say is the default for playing this game. Now everyone's, everyone's getting ready to fight. All right, so Manor Lords starts you in a random place in the map. In fact, if we zoom all the way out, we can see we're at this top corner. So actually, in my other game... I started in this region over here, um, and so I've already started setting up a little, you know, uh, a little town over here in my other game. I've never been to this region before, so every time you start, you start in a different region, and so I think the map layout overall is the same, but I think that not only does your starting position change and the starting position of your rivals change, but I think they might also vary up the... Um, yeah, they do vary up the positions of the resources as well. So even though they've got one piece of terrain, they they do make it pretty variable. So what you start with here is just this little camp. Um, and your people are hanging out at the camp. They sleep in the tents. They, you know, have this pile of supplies. And uh, I'm going to pause the game real quick so we don't waste a bunch of time. Let's read this message. So, okay, yeah, so we're trying to build up our town, our manor, and when we're ready, we're going to go out to those other regions, and we're going to try to take them over. So, um, I don't know, it'll take a while for me to get to the point where I'm ready to do that, but the first thing we're going to need is to collect food and fuel so these people can keep warm and fed in their houses. Um, so let's look around at our food options. So over here, we've got some berries, 
um, and they're slowly growing. And this is actually, this can be a pretty good, at least in my other game, this was a really good source, constant source of food. Over here, we've got uh, wild animals, which in my last game, I had a kind of meager deposit of wild animals. Um, this is a rich deposit of wild animals. So actually, I'm trying to figure out where the best place for my face is. So far, maybe this is a spot with the least UI, but let me know if I end up being in front of something important. So I last time I didn't have a rich deposit of wild animals, so I actually would just hunt them way too far down pretty frequently, and I didn't have a lot of meat. So maybe it'll go a little bit better for me this time. We've got a stone deposit over here. We've got some iron over here, clay far away. But let's also have a look real quick at our farming prospects. So, okay, wait for underground water. Okay, we got a lot of places where we can place a well. That's good. Emmer is wheat. Uh, and so some, in some parts of the game, it's called wheat in other parts of the game, it's called emmer. So, but those are the same thing. That's the thing I had to look up. Uh, okay. So it looks like there's a lot of wheat fertility around here. So I don't really even have to worry about that. What about flax? Okay. So if I want to grow flax, I want to do it in this little cluster of space up here. Barley, barley over here. So flax, emmer and barley. Okay. So, okay. So emmer doesn't like it over here. Flax and Barley both do like it over here. And Rye just loves it everywhere. Rye's amazing. Okay, so whenever I do get to farming, I'm thinking I want to farm over here where it's like, I'll, I'll put a maybe farmhouse or two over here. I'll grow wheat to the left and Flax and Barley to the right, maybe something like that. But I'll build my town over here. I think that makes sense because then my other food sources, because I'm not going to be farming for a little while, but my other food sources are over here. I think that makes sense. Um... And I guess, I guess these woods down here might be a good place to start chopping. So let's, let's do some chopping. Let's start with the chopping. So we're going to want a logging camp, first of all, so we can be chopping down the trees. So we'll stick a logging camp right there. The logging camp is not only where you generate logs, it's where you store logs. Logs are not stored in the, store, stored, stored? Logs are not stored in uh, the normal storage places, which can actually cause some problems here here and there. Um, okay, so we've got this place over here. We don't have a road connecting to it, though, so maybe we should start thinking about our road situation. I'm leaving the tutorials on because there's a decent chance that one of them might remind me of something important that I've forgotten because I'm still very new to this game. So let's make a nice little road. I can make it curvier or less curvy if I want to. So we'll just stick it right over there. There's our road. I think roads are free. Okay, so we've got this that we want to build. And uh, let's have a look at our construction materials. So we've got six timber right now. And this is going to cost two to build. Um, my people have nothing to do but build, so I might as well set several different goals here. Let's, uh, and I've got four more wood to work. Actually, is it? No, wait, I think because I've just committed this timber, I think that it's already been removed from the list. I think this is an interesting thing they do in this game. This list, this is the timber and planks and stone and tools that have not been spoken for yet. So I'm pretty sure that as soon as I place this, I think I had eight before, and then this removed two from it originally already. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if my understanding of that is right. So let's go with um, food. Or is it will foraging appear here? Oh, there we go. Hunting camp and forager hut. So let's start with the hunting camp. Which we want to put near... We can't put it inside the area where the animals live, but we can put it just outside. And I guess putting it in the same place as the stone quarry type zone is probably good. Because it means we can have one road going to both. Um, so we'll stick that there. And then let's look at our timber. Nope, it still says six timber. Okay, so maybe maybe the thing that I thought was wrong. Or maybe time has to be passing first. And people have to actually go and start constructing before that becomes true. I'm not sure. Oh, wait, no. The hunting camp doesn't have a... The hunting camp doesn't cost anything. That's why. So, okay, so this, the forager hut, costs one. So it did, yeah, okay, that uh, that was my mistake. Okay, so the forager camp costs one. So let's stick it here. In the middle of the forest. 
And now, yes, okay, now we're, we have five timbers. So yeah, so as soon as you start placing a building, it basically just grabs and reserves the, the um, materials that it needs, and it acts like you don't have those anymore, uh, which is great, because it means you can't just accidentally screw yourself out of uh, having enough uh, supplies. So let's build ourselves a nice little, little road leading down here. Splendid work on the roof, good sirs. Uh, not sure why it curved like that, but that's okay. Oh, that's fine. That's a really pretty road. And then, I guess since we got this weird corner here, let's just extend it out. And connect it there. Okay, so now we've actually completed this hunting camp, which means we can assign a family to go work there. So up here in the upper left, you can see that we've got four unassigned families and one assigned family. Each job is not done by an individual character, because this is a list of our characters, but it's, but it's divided up into families. We've got five level one families, and as you get them nicer homes, they become level two families and level three families. Um, but uh, you can see there's like, there are 10 actual people here, um, but they represent five families. And so, th so we've just assigned our first family to work at the hunting camp. The other places haven't been built yet, and so all the unassigned families, their job is construction. You always want to leave at least one unassigned family there so that you can build new stuff. But let's uh, let's speed things up a little bit. Oh, yo, Ranathcord asks, are these the five families, like from The Godfather? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think they're meant to sound like that, but I think that is kind of fun. So Motorsport says this looks too complicated for a layman such as me. It is kind of complicated, but I think most of the complication actually arises from the fact that they're not finished with the user experience yet. There's a lot of places where I made mistakes um, in the in my other game that I've been playing, where like I, I did something that was difficult to overcome, some, some made some irrevocable choice that was um, a little bit garbage because I couldn't really anticipate what my choices were going to mean. But you can see that, you can tell, and it will, you'll probably see this as we go on, you can tell that they actually are putting a lot of work to thinking through what kind of user experience they need to create to make everything clear. And they are working on that. I think they haven't achieved it yet, but they are working on it. The thing that's actually really cool about this game, and the thing that, that I think sort of captures people's imaginations whenever they see videos of this game, is what I'm about to show you. Because, well, actually, you know what? Let's finish the logging camp and the Forager's Hut before I show you house building. House building is really, really cool in this game. But uh, I should do it after we finish this construction. So let's speed up time. And so you can watch these little people just working away. The thing that slows down construction is that logs can only be dragged with an ox, and you only have the one ox. Okay, so here is our woodcutter basically the logging camp so now we got somebody working at the logging camp and now the ox where where are you taking oh the ox is here storing logs at the logging camp so now that you've got the logging camp the lo the uh, not only is it creating new logs but the ox is taking all the old logs and bringing them to be stored there meanwhile it looks like they've also finished the forager hut so we're going to assign somebody there so now we have assigned three families to be working at the logging camp, uh, at the uh, hunting camp, and at the forager's hut, and we've got a new message. Uh, whatever, this is my rival bothering me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dignify it with a response. Now, you can look at your supplies here, and you can see that we've got eight months of food stored up. You can look at the specific food. We got 20 meat, 14 berries, 15 bread. Nice variety of food, which is actually another thing that's required for your people to be happy, is to have a variety of food. You can't just live on potatoes all the time. Um, but uh, but it says that, look, we're, we're not going to run out for, of food for 11 months, which is great. It's showing us how, doing no fuel consumption. That's because nobody has a house. Uh, once we have a house, we're actually going to start consuming fuel. So before I get started with the house, I should probably be prepared for that. Uh, I was not prepared for this last time, but let's go with Woodcutter's Lodge. So let's build a Woodcutter's Lodge right here. And so this person is going to be chopping logs into firewood. And you can sort of watch them build their little Woodcutter's Hut right here. 
All right, and we'll assign somebody. So now we've assigned four families. We've only got, we basically got five jobs and five families. And, oh crap, our stocks are getting soaked. Okay. So yeah, so now that, in the last game I played, it also rained at about this time. I think they do this on purpose to make you build a storage. So uh, maybe I could have done that a little sooner if I'd anticipated it better. But I think the most important thing to build first is the granary. Because the granary is going to contain all of your food so it doesn't get all rained on. That requires 10 stone. Luckily, we do have a little bit of stone at the outset. And let's also add a storehouse. But let's make the storehouse lower priority than the granary to build. Okay, so before we build houses, let's get these guys built up. Okay, yeah, so they're requesting more market area for their stall. We'll explain what that means in a bit, but effectively what it means is um, the, the things that are producing stuff, like the hunting camp, they're getting filled up, and, uh, and I don't, they don't have another place to take their stuff. So the granary will help with that. Also, market stalls, which are basically places where your village will members of your village will distribute goods to each other from a central location so that like you know if you're making food in like you know nine different places the food will all go to one place so that if people want to eat a variety of food they don't have to travel all over town to get it they can just get it from the marketplace and so it sort of brings everything together in one spot okay so our construction family is building the granary and the storehouse but i think that in order to actually bring the food inside because we've got a bunch of bread sitting there I think we actually have to assign a family to be full-time granary people. So let's have a look at... Okay, the berries and the wild animals are both pretty inexhaustible, so I kind of want to keep that going. Uh, let's take a break from the woodcutters, because no one's actually using fuel right now. And let's assign the woodcutter to, um, to start collecting stuff and putting it in these storehouses. So they're going to collect... Okay, so they collected all the foods and put them inside the granary. Now, let's have them collect all of the uh, other supplies, firewood and stuff like that. And stick it inside their lovely little storehouse. Okay, so now we've solved that problem. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now it's probably time to get on to building houses. Um, so Luke Blizzard came in and said, Ooh, I wasn't expecting you to try this out. How's it going? Uh, really well so far. I I've, so I've played one game of this so far. And by played, I mean I played the first like hour and a half of one of game of this so far. So I have not taken it very far yet. But I've taken it far enough to enjoy what is sort of, I think, the main attractor of this game, which is just the tactile feel of building these very naturalistic feeling medieval villages. So let's look at how that works. So I've got five families that I need to house. And so each of them needs to have their own burgage plot. And basically, so so I got to think ahead a little bit to where I want to put the marketplace. I think maybe I want the marketplace here or maybe here at the end of this block. Um, or maybe I want to put the marketplace here where the storage buildings are. Either way, I think I'm going to put the marketplace somewhere around here, which means that the spot in between them on this road is probably the most convenient place to live. So let's click here and here and make a nice little line and so this means that this is the road that that, that our little um, houses are going to be on and then I guess I could stretch it all the way across the road yeah there we go so I can just sort of oh okay so we don't have enough supplies to make four we could make three in this space but not four I kind of want to make four in this space it just feels so space efficient so you know what let's wait for a second that was going to cost one more timber than we have? Well. Hey, logging camp. Can you make us some more timber, please? Just need a little bit. One thing I wish... Let's see. Oh, wait, no, you can. Yeah, you can see where the people are working. Okay, yeah, so there's a dude... Oh, he just knocked a tree down. And he brought it in. Does that mean... We've got eight timber now. Okay, now we have eight timber. So let's... Build some burgage plots. Let's do exactly what we were doing before. So there we go. So this, so what this is showing is, 
on the the front street it's showing these four houses and then behind the houses it's showing that they can have they have enough space to do four expansions now if i reduce the amount of space they have some of the houses don't get expansions expansions are basically additional jobs that that family can do in it like because you know, each family they're going to live in the house and they're going to go out and do stuff you know uh around around the village but you can also give them an, an additional job in their uh you know in their own land that also benefits the village. Now, in some cases, it actually is becomes their only job. Like if you make them a cobbler, for instance, that becomes their only job. They don't do any other job. And that's actually a mistake I made in my first playthrough because I made someone a tailor when I had no resources coming in that could actually benefit a tailor. And once you make this choice, it is made for good. You can't make you can't unmake it. I think some of the other choices, like the the ones that don't make become a full-time job like for instance keeping a chicken coop that's not a full-time job that just sort of it's a little bit of additional food income coming from that family um the chicken coop you i think you can swap that out for goats or swap it out for an orchard or something like that if you want to but for some reason the cobbler seems to be immutable i think you have to knock the entire house down if you want it to not be a cobbler anymore and so i kind of made a mistake there so i'm gonna try to avoid making that mistake again but there are four burgage plots so now our construction family is going to start building them. They're going to come over here, cart these logs, grab the ox, grab the logs, cart the logs over. They got to go to the front. There we go. And they're going to start stacking the logs up. And we're going to start building these houses. Now, we eventually are going to need actually five houses, not four. But we got to wait until we... Oh, we, got, we just got two more timber. We can add our fourth house. So let's do that. And let's give it a weird shaped lot. Let's give it a triangular lot. And show everyone that this is what makes this game cool. So we've got four rectangular lots that are like the lots you'd expect from any game and a triangular lot that will also be built on the same way and so you end up you can make these sort of because one of the like hallmarks like aesthetic hallmarks of a medieval village is that the w roads are windy and they're just kind of going with the shape of the terrain and uh you know and it's kind of unpredictable and they sort of like generation by generation they get built up so arbitrary choices at the beginning end up really shaping the shape of the town by the end um and you there's a sort of this naturalistic almost like like watching a crystal grow on a surface or something like that like there's this sort of this weird natural feeling to a medieval village and this game lets you feel your way into a medieval village in this very sort of tactile way and it's it, and i think that's what when people look at videos of this game seeing your ability to do this nonsense that i just did it's the thing that makes the game attractive actually i wouldn't be surprised if you'll remember um oh no bandits are robbing us and i can't do anything about it yet um if you'll remember the game banished which is another sort of survival you know medieval village builder game um there were like, false advertisements on social media that would basically steal a video from Banished and and use it to try to sell completely different games because Banished looked so good. It, like, it looked so fun to sort of build this very sort of naturalistic uh, medieval village. And this one takes it further. I would not be surprised if we started seeing Manor Lords video used to sell games that are not Manor Lords, which is illegal, and apparently doesn't ever get enforced because, uh, I don't know, we've been watching, um, oh, what was that game? It's on Twitter. Like, it's like War or something. Oh, I forgot what it's called. Anyway, it, it, that, that, that video of like, uh, you know, some blue soldiers marching down a highway and they got to pass through these different gates that change what they can do. And there's like a, a horde of a zillion enemies coming at them. And if you make the wrong choices or you hesitate or something like that, then you end up getting killed. It's this like kind of neat looking game that it's really easy to tell that the player you're watching is making obvious mistakes that you could do better than. And that idea of watching somebody make obvious mistakes that you could improve on is a thing that gets people to want to click on a game and try it themselves. Um, and unfortunately, that game doesn't actually exist. In fact, it actually probably wouldn't. It, it looks kind of fun when you watch it. Yay, settlement level went up. Um... It, uh, it looks kind of fun when you watch it. 
it wouldn't actually be fun because it's, it's a very solvable looking game. But anyway, it's not even the game that they're selling. The game they're selling is nothing to do with that video. And, but apparently that's fine because, I mean, I've been seeing those ads on Twitter forever. There's always a community note on it saying, this is false advertising. Advertisements never stop. So I've, I don't know what the rules are, apparently. Anyway, so armament delivery. Okay, so we can now start defining our militia. I've never used the militia before, but we did get a delivery of large shields and spears. And so I'm pretty sure that spear militia is the kind that we can do. And so basically what it means is I've, I've, I've created a unit of spear militia. So all of the eligible uh, characters living in this town are going to say, oh, I'm a part of this unit. And they're going to try to collect the necessary weapons in their home. And, and sort of like, so if I ever need to sort of muster them and call them to action, all those people will leave their jobs in their homes, go get their spears and shields, and come join me in the battlefield. I have never done a battle in this game. I have no idea how it works. But vaguely, that's how having a militia works. And it's based on what happened with militias in real life. And so, uh, you know, it's the game is sticking to its, uh, yeah, we're making an accurate medieval simulator guns. Okay, so have a look at this. So they finished this triangular lot, and as you can see, it's it, the lot is triangular, but they've built the same kind of house on it, and they've got their little backyard. You got these little backyard spots here that have not been developed yet. And let's have a look. So we've just leveled up our town, and so we can choose. We've got a development point, so we can choose something that we want to add to our town. So for instance, sheep breeding. If we want to breed sheep, uh, I think that we've actually got enough really good looking agriculture. Um, it, like like the, the, the soil here is so fertile. I don't feel like we even necessarily need sheep. I never tried orchardry before. Orchardry takes three years to build up. Wow. Okay. There's trapping. Okay. So I don't, I never, okay. So that's another way to get ongoing meat. Ooh, double capacity of berry deposits. Actually, so we've got kind of a weak berry deposit. So I wonder if that might be worth investing in at this stage. Beekeeping? What? Okay, actually, you know what? I kind of want to choose beekeeping. We've chosen beekeeping. I don't know what beekeeping is like in this game. Maybe it's garbage. Um, let's see if it where it shows up. Sheep farm, windmill... Where would the apiary show up? Is it under industry? Malthouse tannery, dyer, smithy, blo bloomery? Oh, that has to do with iron and stuff. Is it, is it here? Forester, saw pit, what's this? Charcoal, hunting camp, for apiary, there we are. Okay, so the apiary costs some planks. So before I can have an apiary, I need to be... Uh, Chopping my logs or planing my logs into uh, into proper planks. Hey there, Orithaus. Thanks for joining us. Randall Court, I hadn't seen the videos of that horrible false advertising game where they actually like have somebody pretending, like it, they hire an actor to pretend that they're actually playing the game when it's actually the same video that that always shows up without the actor. That's hilarious. I just. It would be so weird to have your full-time job, like legitimate job at a company that is apparently a legitimate company, paying your wages to make false advertising on purpose. What must that be like? To be asked to do something semi-criminal? At a semi-legitimate place? I don't know, it just seems really odd to me. How, how, must, how must that work? Anyway, okay, so... We've leveled up our town by building these, uh, by basically getting everyone into a house, and that's great. But now we need to start looking at the houses and seeing what else we need to do to level. Okay, so what, what, so it's saying to level up my settlement again, we need to get at least two burgage plots to level two. To raise something to level two, so I've got, this is the button that will let me upgrade this burgage plot to level two. If I want to do that, I actually have to satisfy all these requirements. The houses have to have water access. They need to have a church. They need to have access to to stalls that supply them with all of these amenities. Um, so the stalls come from a marketplace. And so I could probably make the marketplace happen pretty quick. 
Um, I kind of reserve this spot here to be a good marketplace spot. Before I do that, though, let's see where we need to place water. Um, was that done? Okay, yeah, so we've got water flowing through this whole area. Um, I feel like, okay, it won't fit there. So let's, let's just stick the well right here in the middle of town. Really easy for everyone to reach. And then let's also put a marketplace... Let's put a marketplace here. Actually, let's put it here. And what the mar again, what the marketplace does is it lets these characters build a handful of stalls that give characters access to the amenities that are available. And I just realized as I was building it, the number of stalls got really small. I think it might have been like room for like two stalls. So this might not last. We might need to have another marketplace real soon. Uh, but basically, everybody who has a job. We'll, st we'll try to build a stall out here. Um, yeah, it looks like we've already got a couple in the process of being built right now. They'll build a stall here, and this will give access to the fruits of their labors to the people who live in these in these uh, homes. So, yeah, okay, so, so we've talked about water access. We eventually want to build a church. The church and some of the other stuff we want to do requires planks, so we'll need to get some planks. But really, before we can do any of that stuff... You notice, like, between construction and gathering food? Oh, it looks like, oh, we've already hunted down the wild animals pretty good. Between food collection and and collecting, you know, fuel and wood, we've kind of tapped out our family. So we can't do a lot of different things at once. And unfortunately, we can't gain population until we get our sort of uh, happiness uh, up to 50%. Our approval rating has to be 50% or higher, or we're not going to get any new immigrants moving in. And also there needs to be a, a, an open space, like basically a, a, a house to fill in order for us to get any, any new people coming in. So we can't really afford to add a lot of new jobs right now because we've, uh, we just don't, we, we, we don't have enough people to do the jobs. So I think... The first thing we should do, so this, okay, here's our logging camp. They've already chopped down a lot of the nearby trees. Um, at some point, we'll probably have to show moving a logging camp. But before I do that, let's grab a saw pit. Here's a saw pit, which will grab the logs and turn them into planks. And the planks will let us do things like build churches, build apiaries, that sort of thing. Nothing is requiring us to get stone right now. We we still have 10 stone. And I think the... Where did the church show up? Here's the church. The church requires 10 stone and 20 planks. We've got enough stone for the church, so I'm not going to worry about collecting stone yet. But we definitely need to be making planks. So let's speed up time. Actually, before we speed up time, we should get down in here and enjoy our level 1 berg. So let's hit the little eyeball button here. And look! Look at this! I can run around in my little town! Hey, everybody! Oh, I love your houses, everyone. Very well-made houses. Now, you'll notice that my character does not look like the portrait I chose. That's because this is an in-development feature. Like, they warn us that there's a lot of bugs with running around in this town that was actually built to be a top-down uh, uh, sort of experience. And so I'm assuming things like varying up the appearance of the character is just something that would be coming up in the future. But you can see, look, here's the person who's distributing the firewood. Here's the person who's, uh, what are they, collecting meat? This is the meat person. And I don't see a berry stall unless, oh, oh, the berries, oh, the berries are also being collected here. Oh, so there's one food stall that's pulling from both the hunting uh, lodge or whatever and uh, and the berries. That's cool. Oh, ah, and now the ox is just coming, charging through everything. Oh, oh you're freaking me out, ox. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, uh, they're working on the fidelity of this experience, but this is fine. This is fine. I'm not worried about it. So we're coming over here. We get to, I like that we get to kind of follow the ox around. Like, what are you doing, ox? Ah, oh, don't trip me. Okay, so yeah, so they're, they brought this uh, log over here so that we can make the well, because that's what it takes to build a well, is a really big log. 
So yeah, it's just ready for whoever is constructing stuff to come over and build it. So we've got six months of fuel right now. So I'm thinking... Oh yeah, we actually we don't even have anybody assigned to the Woodcutter's Lodge right now. The logging camp... I could take somebody off the logging camp if we want to uh, speed up construction. But the best way to speed up construction is just to hit the X button a couple of times and raise the speed. So, yeah, so Orithaus is like, is this supposed to be an RTS? And uh, Renethcord says it's more of a community manager. It's that, So it's actually both. So it is primarily a community manager. That's the first thing that it is. But it's got an RTS in it. You actually do go to war with uh, bandits and with uh, sort of competing manor lords. Um, but that's a part of the game I haven't gotten to yet, so I can't speak to that yet. I've, all I've done is try to build a town. Okay, so we've sped things up a little bit. Now we've got a finished saw pit. So whenever we want planks, we can start making planks. And we've also got a well. So you'll notice that now these places say, oh yeah, we do have water access. We do have a fuel stall. We do have a food stall. Uh, they don't have a clothing stall. The clothing stall, uh, that is about hunting because hunting produces hides. Um... And so I think that the problem with the clothing stall might be that I just made the tiniest marketplace in the entire world, and there's no room for another stall. I think it might only have room for the two stalls. So what I probably need to do is add another marketplace. Let's let's do that real quick and see if that actually does what I'm what I'm thinking it'll do. So let's just basically grab this little spot here. There, okay, that should give me room for six more stalls. Let's see if that's true. So we, yeah, so because we've got hides coming in. Oh, wait, no, no. But we need a tanner. That's right, we need a tanner before we can get hides to actually turn into leather. So, whatever, we still need that space eventually. So, to get a tanner, I'm trying to remember how that's done. Is that here? cobbler, joiner, tailor, armor, fletcher? Was Tanner? I think Tanner might be an independent building. Actually, let's let's have a look. Is it, is it under industry, bloomery, smithy, tannery? There we go. Okay, so we can build a tannery to start making leather, and then that would cause a clothing uh, uh, stall to appear here to sell the leather. So we could do that. Our um, approval rating is getting dangerously close to uh, 50%. In fact, now that we've got two different foods in the market, uh, that's actually making people happy. And so that's starting to counteract their memory of homelessness. When you have a bad thing that happens like homelessness uh, in, in your community, it doesn't just go away instantly when you solve it. Uh, it actually sticks around for a while. It takes a while to recover from that negative morale. Um, and so we're still dealing with the, the, the sadness from having been homeless for a while. Once we're up at 50%, though, we can actually start pulling more people in and building more houses so let's see how are we doing with this we got 16 timber we got a lot of timber so yeah let's let's actually build a tannery um i'm not sure where i want to build a tannery exactly i guess close to the hunting camp because it wants hides i don't know that's, that makes sense to me as far as I know, the hides might have to go all the way back home and then come back here again. So maybe that's stupid, putting the tannery right there. But uh, that's fine. Let Okay, but... So that tannery is going to be under construction. But I think I'm going to now start building more bergs. More of these little, little houses. Let's also expand our road network just a little bit. Just so that we kind of know where we're going to need it. So let's extend this road to kind of connect to that road and I want my little town to be mostly clustered around the marketplace so I'm thinking maybe build more houses over on this side around the hitching post the hitching post is where we keep the ox I don't know can I move the hitching post am I allowed to do that yes oh I can move the hitching post sweet where can I put the hitching post honestly probably let, let's put it near where all the wood is So they need okay. They need to they need to grab this wood and move it over here. But yeah, I'm just thinking 
the, the ox is needed the most for the logs, and so might as well keep the ox near the logs, right? So while they're working on that, well, actually, so actually, I kind of need to make them work on that. The problem is, when supplies are, this is a problem that I think they probably are going to have to deal with at some point uh, in the near future. When supplies are left lying around, you can't build where the supplies are. But the ox will always pull from the big pile at the logging camp long before it pulls from any of the other, like, random supplies lying on the ground. And so what you need to do, if you've got random supplies lying around, you need to come up with a bunch of things that use logs, like the saw pit or, like, construction projects, and then turn off your logging camp. Like, basically take everyone out of your logging camp. And so that means that eventually the ox will pull enough logs away from your logging camp that it will start actually pulling logs from other places. I think in the future, they probably are going to want to like change it so that it pr either prioritizes grabbing from supply piles before the logging camp or just give us the option to set a priority on this. Say, hey, pull from this instead of the logging camp so we can get it to go away. Um, I think that would end up making making more sense but okay so we've got a new hitching post that's great but you can see the uh, the ox is is it's dragging a bunch of uh, logs out here but it's getting those logs from the logging camp okay so my goal of eventually having burgage plots over here it's a noble goal i think it's not going to happen soon enough so let's instead pick a new spot and we'll, we'll, we'll develop up here later let's Okay, so eventually I'm going to want a road going down to this iron deposit. So I'm going to branch off this road like this. Basically, the thing I don't want to do is, uh, the, the mistake you can make in games like this a lot of the time is to not think about where you're going to want roads in the future, and you can build yourself into a corner where you've just built houses everywhere and now there's nowhere to start a new road to go off someplace new. So I like so when I'm going about to build along a road, I like to think where am I going to want a road to go from this road? Build that road first and then build around the road. So, we're at 52% now. People are actually uh excited about this place. So let's build them some burgage plots so people can start moving in. So, first we do the frontage and then we go out this far and we could be weird about it if we want to, but whatever, let's just do that. Okay, so now we're gonna build three new houses. Oh good, they grabbed the log from here. Wait, does that mean we ran out of logs here? Nope, they just randomly decided it was time to grab that log. I don't know how it works. How are we doing with that saw pit? Okay, we got we got five planks already. Eventually, we want twenty planks. Or twenty-two planks. We want to build a church and an apiary. For right now, though. Okay, we've only got fuel for four months, but we've got food for thirty-eight months. So, I think we could probably. Give the animal. We're, we're hunting these animals to extinction. Let's let's give a little bit of a break to actually all of our food sources. We got a bunch of food sources all stored up. Let's focus on our construction and our fuel instead. So let's have a fuel person. Let's have a timber person. But it's interesting having to like sort of really grapple with like what jobs are you going to do today? Because yeah, your people like. You, when you only start with five families and you've got like seven or eight jobs you need to do, you got to think about what, what actually matters in the short term. I'm not assigning anybody to the tannery. I put the tannery here because I know we'll need it eventually. No, no, but I've got no call for anyone to work there, though. Okay, looks like we've got a burgage plot here. It is empty. There's no people here. But now we've got space. We've got space so, so somebody could move in if they wanted to. Just watch our little ox go. We can actually make it go even faster.
Oh, you'll notice, oh, we have run out of trees. Okay, so we're finishing up these burgages. That's nice and all. But we're going to need to solve a tree problem. So, okay, let, let, actually, let's finish our third burgage plot. Let's just get all of our existing construction out of the way before we get rid of our sources of construction materials. So build up your little plot there, buddy. I love watching things come together just piece by piece. This is another piece of just what makes it such a fun little tactile game to play. It's just like, oh, look, my little my little dolls have got all these cute little intricate houses. Okay, so we're done with all of our construction. Now it's time to move uh, our logging operation because we've knocked down all the trees basically around here. So I think we probably just need to move into this part of the forest. So let's grab this road. Let's extend it out this way. And then you click each of these buildings, hit relocate, and we just slap it down. And what it does is it deconstructs the old building and turns it into a pile of supplies, of, of whatever supplies, the exact supplies that it took to make that building. And then it recreates an under construction version of the building over the new location. So I'm trying to do this because I think that trees just go away unhelpfully if you just slap something down on top of a tree. So I tried to avoid trees. Okay, so now my wood cutting operation is gone, but all the materials that were necessary to, to, to build it again are left on the ground here. So now, and you'll notice all of those families that were working there, they're now unassigned. And so now basically their job is to construct the place where they used to work. So I only have the one ox. So I have not actually seen yet how I get a new ox. Because I imagine at some point being able to move more than one piece of wood at a time will probably be useful. Looks like we've already built the woodcutter's lodge. And did somebody... Nobody auto staffed there, but I'll, I'll staff somebody there. I like they put these little fires so you can sort of find these places in the woods. Even when there's trees around them. They finished the saw pit. Let's assign someone to that. And now... Our logging camp is ready. I'm actually going to leave the logging camp unstaffed for just a little bit. So that uh, people can grab the, you know, the logs here and transport them there. Um, and nobody new has moved in yet. Oh, we're down to... Ooh. Homelessness is still at... Why are we still messing with homelessness? Huh. I thought we were up at 50% before, but I guess not. Anyway, um, we still got a nice variety of food. That's cool. And we only got the five planks. So we got to work on that. So that's the church. I guess one thing I could do while we're waiting to uh, to set up the, the logging whatever operation, let's assign someone to the tannery. Because what that will do is, that will get us started uh, tan and hides, which will give us a clothing stall. And I think that will make these houses a little happier. Oh, hey, Kiwi Burn just came in with a party of six. Hey there, Kiwi Burn. Thanks for joining us. Playing some Manor Lords here. Oh, there we go. What do we get? Clothing stall. So now that we've got this working tannery with a clothing stall... Okay, they still want clothing stall supply. So it's not just it's not enough to have a clothing stall. There has to be enough stuff in the clothing stall that it makes these people happy. And similarly, okay, fuel stall supply is also low. Okay, yeah, so so keeping these guys satisfied that they've got enough stuff is kind of tough. Um 
But yeah, so how much leather do you actually need lying around to feel good about your leather? I wonder if it's just if the number of houses has to line up with the number of items in the stall or something. I don't know what the rules are for when they get dissatisfied. How are we doing with... Okay, fuel four months. Okay, so we, we definitely need to keep the Woodcutter's Lodge going because we need to have enough fuel for the winter time when the winter comes. Right now it's October. Yeah, winter's approaching, so fuel is non-negotiable. The saw pit... I'm glad we're chopping our uh, chopping our logs here. It looks like... Okay, yeah, we are slowly running out of these logs. Are they? But they are being stacked up here at the logging camp. So we haven't run out of the logs yet. So what else should I do? I feel like I should go back to, I mean, food production. We got 36 months of food, so we pro we're probably fine on food. Oh, so uh, Orthos uh, wants to know, based on a conversation we had yesterday, uh, whether or not I, I ended up with one cake or two cakes for my birthday. I just the one cake for my birthday. That's all we ended up doing, but it was a good cake. I like the cake. Still have it, actually. Uh, you know, haven't eaten all of it yet. I know, I'm not doing my job. So, uh, yeah, Kiwi Bird came in and asked, you know, how are we folks doing? Oh, we're doing good, except nobody wants to move into my town. Okay, so it looks like we've got... Now, we don't have any homelessness now, right? Yeah, we got plenty of space. So I'm hoping these folks are going to re remember that. Oh, clothing market supply. They're excited about clothing market supply. Uh, but yeah, okay, so we, we're up above 50% again. So at some point, someone should immigrate to my town, right? Come on. We need somebody to immigrate to my town because we need to start staffing more jobs. Okay, it looks like the... Uh, the animals have all replenished themselves. <gasps> a new family started moving in. Yes. Okay. Okay. We've done it. We've got a new family coming in. One of these spots has got people in it now. Yep. These guys, they're unassigned. But they now live here. Okay. Cool. So we can start. What can we start doing? Well, we can now... Staff the logging camp. Or, if we don't want to staff the logging camp right now, another option is to double staff the saw pit. Because right now, what do we have? Oh, we have 25 planks. Oh, the saw pit was doing great. We went from 5 to 25 planks real fast. Okay, great. Never mind. Uh, that means, now that we have 25 planks, we can actually build our church and our apiary. So that's cool. So let's build the church. Where do we want to build the church? Maybe just at the little intersection here. So the church, I believe, is in is in the housing section. There it is. So yeah, the church goes here. There we go. So that's a pretty big construction job, but. Uh, I think we'll all be glad when it's there because yeah these people will uh, the thing that i want to be able to do is start leveling up our little burg burgage places okay so here's the problem with the food because nobody's working the food jobs that means nobody's staffing the food stalls and so the distribution of food isn't happening now the forager hut can't work during the winter all the berries are dead but we could at least get somebody working in here so what i'm going to do is unstaff the tannery and even though we have enough food, we still need... Where, where's the... Where's the camp? There it is. Uh, I couldn't find the camp. Oh, we now have... We got seven people now. Awesome. Okay, we can have the tannery and the hunting camp going at the same time. So now that we've got the hunting camp operating again, I think that means that somebody's going to be operating the food stall. Or at least they'll be bringing meat to the food stall. Actually, one thing we should think about is the fact that we've got our granary here, which contains a bunch of berries, but there's nobody working at the forager's hut for the berries. So I think that what we might want to do is, 
actually assign someone to work at the granary to be distributing the food. Actually, yeah, I think that might be what we want. So, you know what? Again, we've got, we still got plenty of meat, right? Let's, hold on. We got 64 meat. We're fine on meat. Okay, so let's take somebody off the hunting cap. And instead, let's have someone work the granary. Because I think what that means is that person will be full-time devoted to distributing food. So, yeah, you can see the people who work at the granary, they're taking a the hand cart down to the hunting camp. Bring the handcart back here, distributing that to the granary, and then the people are going from the granary to the food stall, and now they're filling up the food stall with all the different sources of food we have. And so now everyone's like, oh, yay! Our food stall supply is all full up, whereas that was blank before. And so that's, uh, that's a mechanic that I didn't actually expect from other games like this that I've played. Um, I didn't expect there to be basically a full-time job, which is distribute the food from the granary or distribute, distribute the supplies from the storehouse. But in this game, there absolutely is one. And actually, oh yeah, the storehouse, somebody grabbed the storehouse job already? Or did I, oh no, I forgot I'd left somebody working the storehouse this entire time. All right, anyway. Uh, so we've just brought in our third person, uh, our third family, who just moved into this other burgage plot over here. So really, the only thing that we're short on is the church. So the church is missing one stone. Oh, we're missing. We don't have enough stone for the church. I bet bandits stole one of our rocks. They came over there like, oh, these guys have a nice rock. I'm going to take this rock. So we actually don't have enough stone to build the church. So let's build a stone, a stone cutter camp. Let's say, actually, before we do the camp. Here, let's pause real quick. Before we do the camp, let's build a road right here, past the tannery, looping around there, and then let's build onto that road. So, Stonecutter Camp goes right here, right next to the stones. And then, yeah, the extra, the extra family that we've got we will devote them to working there because... Oh, no, we did get enough stone. Okay, sorry. That one piece of stone must have just been in transit. That's why there was one less... Or something. I don't know. For some reason, it was looking like we didn't have as much stone as we had. A bandit camp was sighted. Where? Really far away. Don't care. All right. Anyway. So we've almost done with this. And the winter is almost done. What, what month is it? It's February. <gasps> we've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby land. Should we track their steps? Yes, let's keep track of them. Again, I'm pretty sure they're far away. I don't think there's much we can do about them right now. So now we've not quite doubled our population, but we've gotten pretty close. We used to have 30-some months of fuel... Now we have 18 months of, I'm sorry, sorry, of food. Now we have 18 months of food. And so we're going to want to start bringing back our food, our food production capacity. But to do that, I think we want to actually add some more houses again. So let's, what do we want to, okay, let's, let's actually, let's get another road real quick. To go past the church here. Just so we're not locking people in. And then let's build just a little bit more burgage so that we can have some full-time food people in addition to all the other jobs we're doing right now. I forgot where the burgage plots were. We'll build these lots facing the church. And, oh, oh, they're all weird. Look, one of them gets an expansion slot. A lot of the others don't. If I do it like this, they all get expansion slots. But I'm kind of intrigued by this weird shape. Oh, here we go. This one, three of them get expansions, two of them don't. In this one, one of them gets a population expansion, but not... Oh, interesting. You know, I'm actually going to do this weird thing, even though this is not very um, efficient. Just because it's weird, and I like weird things. Oh, whoa, looks like he's got a raid from who? 
What happened? Who 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 just came in here? Ryoki Shine. Hey Ryoki Shine. Thanks for raiding and bringing all your friends. Hey there, Tank and Brave Knight. It's good to have all you here. We are playing Manor Lords. We're building a medieval town, having a great time. And basically, we're just trying to get to the point now where we can have sort of a next level town. So we've got plenty of burgage plots now. We just need to have some leveled up burgage plots. So I built those so that we could get some full-time food people again, because right now we're sort of living off our food stores. But in the meantime, now that we've fulfilled all of these requirements, we can now upgrade our first houses to level two. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna upgrade a couple of our places to level two. Just these two that are in the corner here, because that's all it takes to get to the next settlement level, the next medium village settlement level. So we'll just do it with two for now. We'll do it with more eventually. But in the interest of moving quickly, and actually, let's raise the priority of these. We can keep building those other houses in the background for expansion, but let's, let's have our construction workers focus on building these. So I'm pretty sure that when you're running around in your town, uh, you can only... Yeah, you can't do it at top speed. I love that they've got everybody here sell, selling their stuff. Who's got the deep voice? It's, it's all women working here. Okay, that's actually kind of freaking me out. Um, all right. So let's speed things up again. Okay, so they're already building this one. Whatever. At some point, somebody's going to bring something over here, right? Ooh, the storehouse is full. Full of what? Full of everything. Okay, well, you know what we're going to do? Upgrade it to a large storehouse is what we're going to do. Okay, yeah, so he said, look, they're rebuilding this house. They, have brought, they haven't brought all the wood over that they need yet. How much wood do they need? We don't have enough wood. We have got way too many planks, not enough wood. You know what that means? Saw Pit, you've done good work, but I think I need your family to be focused on the logging camp now. Because, yeah, we don't have enough. These constructions just need regular old unplaned timber. And uh, everything we've got is planks. So hopefully we'll chop down some new trees and get this stuff going again. Come on, keep working on it, everybody. I'm betting that's actually not meant to be a masculine voice. I'm betting what they're doing is varying the pitch of these voices to make the character sound different. And I think they've just... Uh, the range of pitches is just set very, very wide. That's my guess. Alright, let's speed this up again. Okay, looks like we brought another log in here. We got all the logs we need. We just need some construction worker to finish their job. There we go. This is now a level two plot, which means they've got new requirements. Now they want to have a better church. They want to have a tavern and they want two different kinds of clothing available. Right now, all we've got is just raw leather. We need to actually start manufacturing or buying clothing. It looks like, oh, one of the other uh, areas is being claimed right now. Um, that's just a thing that's going on over there. I can't, I don't think I can do anything about that. But what I can do is expand this burgage plot. So we can build something here that uh, that lets them, for instance, make ale from malt. Now, we can't make malt. We can't, we, we're not doing barley yet or anything. Um, and so this would be a bad plan because whatever job, like if you give them one of these jobs over here, it becomes their full-time job instead of doing the jobs you've got like things like working at the logging camp they're not going to work at the logging camp if you give them a job like being a, a cobbler um but if you give them these th this just means that they're making some extra food or some extra hides on their own and you can actually you can build an orchard but orchards aren't productive for a while so i'm not going to bother with that 
having some nice vegetables to sort of raise the uh, uh, sort of quality of, of food or the variety of food would be good. Um, a Fletcher's workshop, I think. So, so here's my problem. This is something that I that I feel like I need to see in this UX. This doesn't tell me that in order to make these clothing items, I need to have linen. If I'm not planting flax, if I'm not making linen, this is useless. I will convert this entire house, uh, household into people who are tailors who have no equipment, nothing they can use. And similarly, the cobbler's workshop, I'm not actually sure. Do I have what it takes to make shoes at the cobbler's workshop? I've got leather. Does it take more than leather? I don't know. And so I'm really nervous about making this person a cobbler if I don't have a lot of people because like, I, I end up just wasting them on being a cobbler. So this is information that I feel like I need from the UX. Um, what I'll probably do is, but I'm not going to build a cobbler right now. What I'll probably do is in my other game that I'm playing on my own, you know, uh, uh, off the stream, I'll experiment with all of these and find out what they do and find out which ones are good to build early and which ones are not good to build early. For right now, Let's just give these guys a chicken coop and get ourselves another source of food. So we send them a chicken coop. How are we doing on logs now? 11 timber. Okay, so yeah. Uh, assigning the sawmill people to chop down trees is definitely making a difference. And you can see, like, they're making a nice little halo of fallen trees around them over here. Two entire households are now devoted to chopping down trees for me. So it's great. And it looks like, oh yeah, we've got chickens now. We got chickens. So that means that we're gonna start having eggs show up, I think at the food stall? Not yet anyway. I don't know how long it takes to e for eggs to happen. Uh, oh, my settlement level increased because, ah, because my second burgage plot. So let's let's have these guys make vegetables. The previous guys got uh, eggs. These guys are getting vegetables. And so now we've got a couple of little extra food producers here on top of our normal food production. And let's let's prioritize the large storehouse here too so we can get enough space to store all of our stuff. A fire broke out. Where? Oh, crap. Uh, what happens when there's a fire? It's raining. Does that make a difference? Okay, it looks like people... Oh, they're running to the well to get water. Oh, look at this. Everybody stops everything. And they run to the well to get water. Oh, can I watch this firsthand? Oh, look at this. I wish I could help. I bet I can't help. Come on, everybody, quick. We don't want your friend's house to burn down. Come on, hurry it up. What we need to do is form a line and pass the buckets from hand to hand. All this running is wasting time. Okay, I feel like maybe there's a little bit less. Oh no, nope. We lost the house, everybody. Now it's just a burning puddle. What started this fire? Some kind of oil fire, I guess. Okay, we're down a house. Um. Oh, okay, but this automatically... Okay, this automatically becomes a construction site to rebuild. So let's um, speed up time and see how quickly we can rebuild that burgage plot. Come on, everybody. Get, let's get the whole town together. Build a new house for those folks. Okay, that was great. Oh, there's like a building frenzy going on now. Somehow overcoming that adversity has filled our people with hope. By the way, I love the little privies in the back here. The privies are the, my favorite part. We got one more plot. And I think, what are we missing here? Oh, we need timber over here too. Okay, well let's let's finish everything. Come on, finish this thing. Are we running low? No, we have 31 timber. We're doing great on timber. And enough people oh, we got another person who moved in. So let's oh now that we've got okay, the berries are back. It's no longer winter. 
Let's assign a full-time forager. And let's reassign a full-time hunter. Our food went from 18 months to 13 months as we add more people. Not only does time progress and lower that number, but adding more people divides that number and makes it uh, significantly smaller, significantly faster. So let's finish up the storehouse. Oh, and I forgot. We can choose another specialty. So, okay. There's really good... Um, what am I trying to say? There's really good, uh, uh, like, fertile fields around here. And so we could employ an oxen at the farmhouse to plow fields. Now, do we have to buy a new ox, though? That's the thing. I'm not sure how buying oxen works. So maybe I want to choose this. Okay, I'm going to choose this. I'm not sure if I can actually put it to use yet. So the tank was blaming Miss O'Leary's cow for uh, for that hot place burning down. And, and yeah, I would say, oh, they lost a house, but they saved the town. I agree. Ooh, a new family moved in. Oh, and we got a new food stall? We got multiple food stalls now? That's a new firewood stall. Okay, so we, yeah, we got an additional food stall. Is it just because we've got so many different foods coming together? We got eggs, we got berries, we got meat, we got bread. We got all kinds of stuff coming in. Look at these veggies. Oh, these beautiful veggies. Yeah, it looks like... Okay, whatever. Ah! Slow down a little bit. Okay, I'm losing track of what's going on in my town. Slow everything down. Come on, I just want to finish this one thing. Can we just finish this one thing? Come on, construction workers, you can do it. Let's get our big fat storehouse. Another new family moved in. Oh, we are going to be all ready for the next phase. Comes another log with the ox. Oh, there we go. Come on, finish it. Two more logs, two more logs. I guess the ox has to drag it from pretty far. The logging can't be in all the way over here. What we need is more oxen. How do I get more oxen? Livestock. Kunrad is the name of the ox? Order another ox. But we need wealth. And wealth... So right now my wealth is 18. And wealth comes from leveling up your houses. And turning people into artisans. That sort of thing. So, okay. So now I know how to get another ox. Another ox would probably help with this immensely. We Okay, we have finally finished the large storehouse. But we got four unassigned families who are just assigned to construct things, and I'd have nothing new to construct yet. So we've been doing this now for well over an hour, so I'm going to need to quit. But uh, the next episode, what I'd like to do is have a look at farming. So let's just get a little preview of it here. We've got a lot of fertile ground out here that can be used to farm wheat and a lot that can be used to farm flax. Like right here, we can farm flax, make linen, and make clothes to satisfy people's desire to have a lot of fancy clothes. Um, and so what I'm going to do is, in the time between now and the next episode, in my other game, I'm going to learn about cobbling, I'm going to learn about, uh, you know, uh, tailoring, and uh, I'm going to come back here, we'll, we'll, we'll plant some flax, we'll plant some wheat, uh, and, and we'll get the farming uh, economy going. We've got four unassigned families here, uh, and now the ability to recruit an ox. And so between all of those, I'm pretty sure we'll be, we'll be in pretty good shape. And oh, we've also got an apiary that we've never used. So we've got a lot of options coming to us, but uh, for right now, I need to quit so that I can, you know, go and find out how all of that stuff works uh, and make the next episode actually be good. So... 
thank you all for joining me for this. Uh, there's a subscribe button, and here's links to other videos. The next time I come back and play Matter Lords, that video is going to go there, so you can click on it, and I'll see you then.